Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for all of you for um, participating in it. And thank you very much to Bakhat Tolgenov, who uh, kindly <laughs> um, accepted our um, our offer to, to hold a webinar. Uh, Bakhat Tolagenov is um, a PhD candidate and the teaching assistant at the University of Glasgow. Um, he's studying uh, business management um, at the University of Glasgow. Business management is yes, um, the webinar he will be presenting is on intended and unintended consequences of decision making a study of Kazakhstan's response to China's revival of the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, dear Bakhat Tolagenov, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's, it's very nice to see you all here. And thank you very much for your time. So just for the sake of time, let's get started. Right. So um, my topic is PhD thesis on intended and unintended consequences of decision making. A study of Kazakhstan's strategic decision in relation to China's Belt and the Road Initiative. And yes, as uh, Mulder have, uh, has uh, already introduced, so I'm a PhD researcher at Glasgow University, and my supervisors are Professor Robert Chia and the Dr. Wei mm -hmm. Yu. Right. Um, so, um, as I said, my topic is on decision making, and as a case study, I am taking Kazakhstan's response to China's Belt and Road Initiative. Right, but what is decision making? So, in order to come to decision making, first of all, we need to understand what action is. Right. So, because only through action we make decisions, isn't it? Right. So. And now, okay, we've got here some audience. Could you please tell me what is the difference between winking and the blinking? Any thoughts? Um, it's a purpose, so it, right. it's intention. Good, very good, yes. So what is purpose? So winking is purposeful action, isn't it? It is intentional. But what about blinking? It's a reflex. Exactly. It's a reflex in which we are passive, right? So, yes, this is blinking and this is winking. As you already said, yes, blinking is something that we cannot control and we do not intend, while winking is an intentional action. Thus, we are responsible for it legally, morally, and so on from all the aspects. So uh, Chisholm, one of the 20th century uh, American philosophers says, intentional action is a responsible action. That's why we should be held accountable for it. And if it is not within the power to perform it, then we are not responsible for such behavior. However, however, the question here is, what is the difference between intentional and unintentional action? How do we differentiate? Hmm. So different philosophers talk about it and Okay, so this is a long topic, but I'll try to be brief as much as possible. So, intentional action is something that we do on purpose. And purpose can also be purposive and the purposeful action. And Chi and the Nayak in their research, they say, Purposive action is something that we walk away in order to prevent undesirable consequences. While purposeful action 
as something that we instead move towards in order to get desirable outcomes. So there are many ways of explaining why humans act intentionally. And if we summarize, we can bring it in several points. The so first one is pro attitudes, which is coined by uh, Noel, and, uh, Noel Simon. And he, said, he gives a list of um, pro attitudes, list A and list B, which are the reasons for human beings to act, right? So for example, we, we act, we do something, because we like it, we want it, we, because, because we are interested in it, because we want to achieve it, because it brings happiness, or because we enjoy it, we love it, we adore, and so on. Or we do something in order to, because we don't like something. So we want to shy away from it. So we want to prevent it, get rid of it, to stop it. Right. However, However, such pro-attitudes are not enough to, for human beings to act. So, for example, let's take into example um, um, a case when someone's son or daughter got stolen, right? So, as, uh, and the robber said, okay, if you, if you I mean, if you don't give us this amount of money, then we're not gonna let your son or daughter go. So in that case, the doer is not, he acts, he brings, he, he, he robs bank, not because he likes it or he, he, he dislikes it, but because he believes that his action, in this case, robbing a bank, will have a causal link, which in the end will free his or her daughter or son. So this is the belief. And one missus similarly says, in order to act, the another condition for action is the expectation. So basically, whenever we act before action, we expect, we say, okay, if you do this, then we're going to get this result. Right. So basically, in order to act, we need to have expectation, belief, attitude, and so on. And we, we act because we want to substitute our less satisfactory state to more desirable condition. So these are the conditions for action. However, action is always about future. It's not about past. And even someone's um, intention to stay in his present state, is also, it also refers to future. So action always refers to future. However, however, future is uncertain. Future is inherently uncertain because it hasn't happened yet. But there exists um, a concept like scientific determinism, which means that lots of people including uh, prominent um, uh, physicists like uh, New uh, Newton, uh, Newton and Einstein and Laplace, they said that time is just an illusion. So this means that future is not uncertain. Future is certain and it is predictable and it can be predetermined. So uh, 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 
uh, uh, Newton's time reversibility, right? As you can see in the, in the, in the picture here. So basically what it says is, if we are given uh, a credentials and uh, like full information about a, a particular um, uh, uh, rate, the object, then it is possible to, to, to calculate, to, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's to predict its future and the past uh, if we have enough information. So Einstein said, okay, there is, there, there, is, there is no difference between past and the future, and time is just an illusion, and so on. What's interesting is, beside this physicists, right, we've also got some philosophers who also thought that if we have profound insight into a man's mental character, then it is possible to calculate a man's action in the future. However, however, so this scientific determinism, so-called scientific determinism is not really true um, in, 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 in human action. And, and one of the prominent philosophers of 19th century, Karl uh, Popper, gives a, a, a good um, example of it. So he says this scientific uh, determinism is nonsense. So not every event can be predicted. For example, humans could uh, creativity. So let's uh, think of, of a musician. So we cannot, it is impossible to predict when a musician is going to come up with a new song, or its words, lyrics. So this is something that comes as a, you know, as a process. And another reason why scientific determinism is not true is because instability. Before physics tend to think that in this world, everything is stable. And once we know the formulas and it is possible to predict, you know, the motion, the behavior of any object, and everything is stable. But the introduction of and advancement of and equilibrium physics, non-equilibrium physics, and infinite changing natural processes lead to instability. Also, we can think of the series of probabilities, chance. Okay, let, let's think of flipping a coin, right? Or rolling a dice. No one. I mean, we can approximate, but no one can say with certainty what's going to be the result when we flip the coin. We can only approximate. Right, so as we are saying, action, action is about future. Future is uncertain, right? uncertain and the thing is this uncertainty uncertainty which is known for um, which can be described with many definitions such as instability indeterminism probability not constant problematic doubtful and so on this goes on and on and on have a significant impact for decisions to be made and makes the range of outcomes unknowable, unmeasurable, and non-quantifiable. Okay, let's assume that there is no uncertainty. In that case, 
there wouldn't be anything such as decisions. We wouldn't be making decisions. Let's take this example, right? Like okay, from the from the economic perspective. Uh, I'm really I'm really sorry, Bakhat, but the presentation um, has been canceled. So can you please? Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, I'm, it I'm just sorry. was like uh, thirty seconds, not a long time ago. Okay. Uh, okay. I need to end the show. And okay. So um, I'm I'm so sorry for this inconvenience. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, so, can you see it now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I think I stopped here, right? Um, Janat has written that he, he cannot hear us. I can hear you perfectly. Can uh, anyone else plus, uh, please let us know in the chat if, can, if you can hear can us? Hear okay, okay. It seems as other people can hear us except Janat. Um, so Janat, can you please um, turn uh, turn on the uh, the microphone in the left corner? It seems as your computer is having a problem since other participants can hear Bahut. Okay, I mean, just 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 let me know when I can carry on. Okay, okay. I think it's it's all right. You can carry on. Okay, great. Thank you. So basically, yes, I think I stopped on this page, right? And um, yeah, so uh, uncertainty, which is uh, which can be defined with many definitions, such as like you know, as you can see, see on the screen, and determinism, probability, and uh, uh, ambiguous, not constant, ignorance, reliable, not reliable, has significant impact on the decisions we make. And if there is no uncertainty, there wouldn't be any decision to make. And this is the reason why. So let's take from the economist perspective, someone who's looking for, you know, money is offered two boxes like this. And one is full of money and one is empty. So is there any decision to make for him or her? Obviously not. Because it is certain that one is full of money and the other is empty. So if the, 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 the thing is here, if there is no uncertainty, then there is no decision to make. Right. So, now let's talk about decisions. So we came from action, action is about future, future is uncertain, and uncertainty makes this decision-making process very difficult, right? So what is decision-making? So decision-making is choosing a best option available among alternatives to achieve you know the goal so and this is a very big concept so and i'm not going to um here to to to, to get to board with you know the, the very uh, details um but the things i'm going to mention here is is about rationality and terms like bounded rationality. So back in that day, rationality was the term to justify why someone decided in a particular way. However, humans have cognitive limitations. So rationality means that we make decisions with full information, with all the information. However, we have limitations, cognitive limitations that we cannot have, we cannot possess all the information. And so we make decisions based on the information, knowledge, 
that we have. So, which is, which leads to bounded rationality. So this means that the outcomes are not about maximizing, it's about satisfying. So based on the resources, the knowledge, information we have. Also, there are paradoxes like what comes first? Is it decision or action? So do we decide first before acting or do we act without making decisions? So, and there is also importance of tradition, phase, and intuition, the informal information that all together can affect the decisions made. So, now, actions, uncertainty, decisions, and when we make decisions, we choose one of the alternatives, right? One of the alternatives. So um, one of the best alternative that is more desirable, that has more desirable outcome. However, however, each of these alternatives has a set of consequences. So that consequences that we are aware of while making decisions. However, however, any decision can also have unintended consequences. So, so unintended consequences are not just the outcomes that hadn't been thought of, but it is the consequence that decision maker could not have thought of when he or she was making decision that decision. So this means that any decision might have intended consequences that we expect to get and unintended consequences. But why does unintended consequences happen? Why does it happen? And Merton, Robert Merton, actually who, who coined this term unintended consequences gives reasons why such, uh, you know, why, why an unintended consequences occur. The first one is ignorance. So ignorance comes from our confidence. <clears throat> Sometimes humans in making decisions are very confident. They think that they know it all. So, and they, they make decisions as a result, there is an unintended consequences. And the second one is error, which is, human fallacy. So it is in human's nature to make mistakes. And as a result, unintended consequences might occur. And another important one is imperious immediacy of interest, which means that sometimes we are too narrow-minded. So basically, we just want to get one result and we just make decisions. So we neglect all the other factors. So we are too narrowly focused because we just wanna get it, that's it. And such cases, again, lead to unintended consequences. Right, and basic, uh, basic values, 
and prediction. Um, okay, so basic value is also a type of ignorance. And uh, so um, basically, which all together lead to unintended consequences. Right, so now if we look at it at all together, so humans act, but actions about future, future is uncertain, and uncertainty makes the decision making difficult. And despite that, we make decisions. We don't have full information, full knowledge, but we do make decisions. And, and in making decisions, we choose one alternative, and that alternative, the best, the best uh, alternative, and that alternative has a set of consequences that we expect to get. And it also might have unintended consequences, which is caused by the reasons I have just mentioned. Right. So um, now, I think now my topic is clear, right, for you. So initially my topic was intended and unintended consequences of decision-making. So this is how I arrived at it. And uh, I'm studying a, a Kazakhstan's case. Actually, it's a response to, to the Belt and the Road Initiative. Okay, let me briefly introduce to you what the BRI is. So this is the initiative which was first announced in 2013 in Kazakhstan by Chinese leader, Xi Jinping, and which involves two thirds of the world and one of the largest projects ever. So it has several purposes such as unimpeded trade, financial integration, infrastructure, economic aid, bilateral, multilateral connections, and people-to-people -people ties, which includes culture, education, and so on. Right. So, however, um, let me please um, quote uh, Robert Mertens and this um, um, statement. So he says, the intended and unintended, un un anticipated outcomes of purposive action, however, are always in the very nature of the case, desirable to an actor, desirable to an actor, though they might seem negative to an outside observer. Right, so this means that although we have this um, good positive purposes, there are also opposing views negative views um, due to several facts such as debt trap diplomacy because of Chinese lending policy and non-transparent financial cooperation. And actually I have requested the, 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 the agreement uh, for, 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 from our ministries. However, however, however I, I haven't got any result and any response yet, although I sent many, many, many um, emails. Uh, production capacity cooperation, hub and spoke regime, and uh, you know, secure the supply of key materials and the food. Right. So what we can understand from here is there are good views about Belt Road Initiative, and there are some negative. But however, what's the truth? Who knows what's the truth? Right. Let me just give you this, you know, uh, dots and ask you to come up. I mean, what, what do you think? What geometric, you know, the, 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 the uh, figure it is? And of course, many of you might think of triangle, isn't it? Yeah. And let's say the truth is triangle, right? However, what if I, I show you this one? Hmm. 
we might have misled. So similarly in the case of the Belt Road Initiative, because this is a long-term project, no one can say this is, you know, uh, a bad or a good project. However, what if I show you this one, right? The more dots and the more we can verify, justify our arguments. So we say this is not circle, this is a triangle. So uh, this some, uh, leads to sometimes uh, Karl Popper's um, uh, so he, he, he says that science progress by refutation. So basically we say what is not in order to get the truth. So, right, Kazakhstan is a key player in the Belt and the Road Initiative. So because it links China, to Europe. And it also has abundant natural resources. And this, this is a key player. And in order to properly, accurately examine the intended and unintended consequences of decision-making in Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan's response to Belt and the Road Initiative, we, we need to have a deeper look. So in my research, what I have also done up to this day is, is also looking at these areas. So basically, um, the, the main, the, at the core, of this initiative as the trade, right? So we need to understand what is trade? Why do countries trade? So, and why, why, why don't we just make it, make a product ourselves? Why do we have to trade it? So we trade because it is more beneficial. Well, that, there are many reasons, actually, and I'm not going to talk about it now. So, and then I have, oh, okay, the Belt Road Initiative, it says it has huge impact on economic growth, right? And what is the role of trade in economic growth? I have looked at this as well. And so, and now it is important also to talk about division of labor. So why some countries, some countries produce more or, uh, okay, so basically, please, let me please explain this division of labor. Um, so let's assume that um, here, 10 of us, right, 10 of us. And we need to, I mean, each of us can make can produce a phone like entirely full phone and each of you can produce 10 phones per day and in total we can produce 100 phones per day however however if we if we Separate the tasks. So one of you make only produce only the screen and the other on the cameras, the other buttons and so on. So this means that we will be able to produce more than 10 per day. So probably hundreds, hundred screens per day because it's much simpler than producing entire phone. So in total, in total, we're gonna produce not hundred phones a day, but thousand phones a day. See, 
we become more productive. However, we can only produce this entire phone through trading, isn't it? I produce screen and uh, we trade with each other. We exchange. So this is about productivity, division of labor, how it leads to trading. And for me to examine this, 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 this to understand this build up initiative properly, accurately, it was also important to understand the ancient Silk Road. Ancient great Silk Road. And why it was abandoned. So, and also it was important to understand what, why countries trade through land, not through water. Through water we can carry more, but why through land? Because it is faster. Because it is more reliable and so on. And what is Kazakhstan's competitive advantage? Comparative advantage through manufacturing. And then, now I'm still in the process of analyzing the China's uh, Belt Road Initiative in relation to, Kaza uh, in particular, Kazakhstan's response to Belt and Road Initiative. So basically, this is all about my research so far. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope that that wasn't boring. And uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to answer. That's it. Uh, dear Bakhat, thank you very much for your uh, interesting, fascinating presentation. Uh, yeah. So now let's open our Q&A session questions and answers. Um, dear audience, if you have any questions to Bahat, please unmute your microphone and spill it out. Or you can write in the chat if you wish. Uh, let's wait for a few seconds if anyone has a questions. If not, I will ask mine. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, uh, thank you, Bakhat, for your presentation. Uh, so, what are the real consequences of the decisions? What's your final thought about the consequences of the decisions that making Kazakhstan's uh, government uh, by accepting the BRI uh, offers? Okay, a very good question. Uh, let, let me again please share my uh, screen right here. So, um, right. So, um, I it is. I think it's a bit early to give my personal um, uh, how we say it uh, thoughts uh, hypothesis because I haven't started my empirical um, data collection yet, right? So, but Kazakhstan um, up to this moment believes that Belt Road Initiative has only positive consequences. So, which are mentioned in this list. So, basically, um, um, it is, uh, I think, self explanatory. Yeah, if you look at this um, list. Uh, yeah. that, does this answer your question, or I have my got your question wrong? Sorry. Uh -huh. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I, I would be happy to collaborate in future when you start your um, empirical study, because my topic is also related to the uh, to the BRI, and uh, 
working on uh, interests, interests of national interests and interests of uh, elites on via BRI projects and books particularly on BRI projects uh, and themselves. So yeah. Sure. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, dear Shakya, thank you for your question. Uh, can you please tell us about yourself a little bit? Uh, you hey. mentioned that you will be making a research. So where do you study? Uh, um, PhD in the University of Exeter, UK. Oh, okay. Wonderful. And this is my my uh, this is my third year. Yeah. So uh, I'm currently also doing um, like a field work. Just started my field work and the data collection process. And so uh, I. I, I have some uh, like views about consequences, but yeah, let's wait when you have sure. your views and then we can discuss about that. So Thank you're doing you. in the so business much. management or in the public no, politi politics? Oh, okay. I'm working on political and economic um, factors uh, related to, to BRI, how they uh, implemented in Kazakhstan. Yeah, Thank that's, I much. think, a really hot topic. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So that the, was the first question from Shakya. If anyone has uh, questions, please um, unmute your mic microphone now. Uh, if not, um, dear Bahad, I would like to also, it's not a, a question really, it's a rather a comment. So from my point of view, I think the Belt and Road um, project would bring more benefits economically to the Kazakhstan because uh, from what I read today, um, since the Silk Road has stopped, uh, the Central Asian countries um, are um, do not share the same economic uh, space, so they're kind of isolated in the economy. Sure. Uh, they don't interchange their goods. And also, I, I was reading that uh, now Kazakhstan is becoming more and more dependent on um, Russia, so it's benefiting Russian economy, but mm. it's not is not paying back. So I think with the introduction of the Belt uh, Road, our economic uh, path will be open to other Central Asian countries. So yeah, yeah. I think uh, maybe economic wise we would benefit benefit more, but. I'm not sure about the political side of it. So, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very interesting view, actually. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, just for the sake of time, I didn't go um, in depth. So, why there are, I mean, what risks, opportunities, challenges we have. But um, at any time in the future, well, I've got um, a whole chapter on that. So, <laughs> Literature review, I mean, literature review. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. yeah. So um, we can also talk about it in detail. But here, my, my purpose was about decision-making. So why do we make decisions? So consequences, uncertainty, actions. Yeah, so this is, this is a part of our life. So um, small or big ones, but every day we make decisions, right? So even um, like um, whenever we want to eat, we make decisions so whenever we make decisions we, we don't know so it's uncertain we, we don't know what we're gonna eat and then 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 we have options we have options such as for example we can deliver we can cook or we can um, go and eat out and something else but each of them has a set of consequences isn't it so uh, basically and there might be unintended consequences as well for example let's say then then we decide to uh, we, we decide so it, it, it's out and uh, for example for me the, the closest one is mcdonald's i went there and i had burger then then i liked it and i liked it and i used i mean then i started going every day to mcdonald's because i i, I like that food the burger so much then in the end i had this um how i said health issues so this is the unintended consequences of just simple decision making, right? So basically, this is just a small example, but uh, the, the greater the, 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 the project, uh, the decision is, then the greater unintended consequences are. So this is something uh, important we have to bear in mind. 
Okay, so from what your presentation, um, I got an impression that um, the negative unintended consequences will be <laughs> prevailing over the positive intended consequences. Well, um, good question, a very good one, because unintended consequences can also be positive. Okay. Can also be positive. I will give you an example. Um, there was a hurricane, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Bangladesh, uh, like in, uh, many years ago. And then um, someone who just wanted to help out the, the people in his village, eventually, eventually, end up uh, opening a, a Virgin Atlantic. So basically, just helping few people end up in opening a big business, right? So there are also uh, positive consequences of decision making. Okay, thank you. Can I comment a little bit? Sure. <laughs> yes, yes, sure. So, uh, no doubt that uh, there, uh, there are many positive uh, consequences of the decision uh, to, to join this uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, however, I urge you to not to limit yourself uh, to the positive consequences of these decisions, because um, uh, as we can see from the list of the projects that are included as a BRI projects in Kazakhstan, uh, most of them are in uh, just uh, exporting uh, raw materials, exporting raw materials to China uh, and other countries. And then um, some of the projects that are uh, intended to produce some products are limited <clears throat> to, 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 to the production that uh, is already exist, exists in Kazakhstan. So it's not something new, uh, which, is, which would be preferable for Kazakhstan to bring something new rather than just uh, uh, qu uh, uh, rising quantity of uh, the the factories that are already exist and uh, do not bring uh, high value in, in economic terms and uh, bring some un negative consequences to, to our um, uh, environment, environmental consequences. So uh, I understand that your project is business oriented project and uh, you want to see the uh, positive consequences. Positive consequences are well presented in general now and uh, in in term in the level of uh, in in the government level and uh, that all, uh, all states that joined this initiative they are uh trying to like uh present only the positive sides and the positive sides are shown and seen very well so uh if you your your study, I think, just it's just my mm -hmm. more valuable if you can show the negative sides of it and uh, uh, and uh, propose some um, uh, uh, some uh, this uh, uh, like solutions for making it uh, for dealing with negative solutions that would be more like uh, valuable for us, for Kazakhstan, and uh, in general, like uh, for academic uh, study. Thank you very much, actually. That's a very good point. Well, for, uh, I think you, you might be aware of the relocation of 54 Chinese industries into Kazakhstan, right? Yes, uh, I'm looking in detail of this, all yeah. this. So environmental consequences. Yeah. And as you also said, like Kazakhstan exports, so over-dependency, on, 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 on foreign items and uh, so, uh, and our local um, not, not being uh, able to compete locally. So there are many other reasons. Yeah, and there are many other aspects, which, yeah, which, which I am still looking at it. So yeah, thank you very much for your, your uh, of course, yeah, I will take it into, into account. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's important to mention that not all of the projects are uh, uh, like, related to exporting uh, raw materials from Kazakhstan, but 
and it's not also uh, all about uh, relocating uh, relocating some uh, factories to Kazakhstan, old factories. Some of them related to that. Some of them related to ex uh, exporting uh, raw materials. Some of them related to production even, and uh, uh, important production and others related to uh, to, to financial financial uh, sectors, but uh, in general, uh, there are many, uh, as you say, unintended, maybe intended, but uh, I can't say for sure, but there are many uh, negative consequences related to uh, decisions that are made in, within Kazakhstan, not related uh, to intentions and actions of China. So yeah, that would be more like, if you can show these uh, consequences. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Ake. And it seems that Ablai uh, agrees with you on that. Uh, he wrote that, yeah, it's uh, beneficial to consider the negative consequences. I'm sure Abahat was uh, bearing it in mind to consider sure, yeah. both sides to keep thank it up objective. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, um, thank you very much for your answer. May I ask a question? Don't have time. Yes, yes, we have time. Thank you. Sorry, can I hear you properly? Can you hear me now? Yes, but can you uh, turn on the volume, please? Uh, one second, sorry. It is okay now. Well, it's more or less okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, how about now? Oh, great. No better. Oh, okay, it's better. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And unfortunately, I missed the last part of your presentation. So I'm going to jump a bit messy here. So I was just wondering, very interesting topic. Um, it's not about China as such. It's more about the Kazakhstan, how the decisions are made, and what are the consequences of these decisions. I was just wondering, what is the empirical focus of your project in general? So what do you want? What are the questions? What are the kind of um the results that you want to produce so if briefly because i missed this part sure, sorry sure. thank you for your question so basically what i'm intending to do is so i am looking at mainly unintended consequences and i'm saying that those unintended consequences can be minimized or avoided that's brief answer okay Methodol methodologically I mean, how are you gonna do this? So okay, you, okay. So this how is you measure this uh, this consequences? How you find this unintentional or intentional things? Because it's very the the boundary between intentional and unintentional is very kind of uh, invisible, right? To many to many. So how you did discover this? So in, methodologically, exactly. exactly. I, I see. I see what you mean. So basically, now I am I am on my methodology chapter. Okay. Basically, I am about to start my empirical data collection and so on but I, because I, I cannot right now tell you my um okay provide you with an answer yeah, okay i haven't i haven't yet come to this point so sorry for that but uh yeah th that's true that it says um um but, but the main, main point is so basically in my hypothesis I'm, I'm trying to say that any decision has unintended consequences and those can those consequences can be minimized or or uh, avoided. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, theoretically, yes, we can argue that. But I was just wondering to what extent, and because I'm curious. Sure, sure. Uh, it seems that it's methodologically, especially when you deal with such a topic in the context of Kazakhstan, China, right? It's a very politically sensitive, not just politically, it's also a socially sensitive question dealing with China. And getting collecting data about China, what Kazakhstan, what is the relationship between Kazakhstan and China, sometimes extremely difficult. So I was just wondering to what extent it would be feasible or possible for you uh, to go to the field, uh, just for instance, go to the ministry and ask people for an interview and try to kind of understand how the decision making uh goes right i mean how the decisions are made who are responsible because you need to identify all the actors you need to identify all the people in this circle who are in charge of decisions right and you need to identify what was intended and what was unintended um the, the, the kind of uh, frame so 
methodologically it's very challenging at the same time very interesting topic so that's my curiosity mostly Thank not you. the it's question yet, this is the limit this is the possible limitations of my research because of the non-transparency of the agreements. yeah okay yeah of the agreements yeah however yes what i'm in my head what i'm planning to do is yes um i have already requested this official documents from our responsible um, government bodies, but I haven't got any response yet, uh, although I sent it th three times. And so, um, yeah, uh, I am uh, because, um, yeah, th because this Belt Road Initiative has several aspects, such as cultural, I'm also going to interview people, not only those who are involved in this Belt Road Initiative, such as you know, like different um, corporations, organizations that are operating under the BRI. Not only them, but also people, ordinary okay. people to, to see the impact of the project on them. Okay, good, good. Uh, good luck anyways. Uh, would love to see the results when it's there ready. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Janibe, for your question. Uh, Bahat, I also wanted to add, uh, since we have a few minutes left, uh, do you know whether, when the project will be uh, finished, finalized, and when will, will it start working? Because I think it also, also will be challenging to know the results since the project is not in progress, so it's not working. Uh, uh, so I much. think you're, so now you're, you uh, you'll be collecting the data on expected results, right? Not the actual results, because from what I know, the, uh, the project is being built. But it's not, it has, hasn't started working yet. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, um, it's a long term project and they're expected to fully finish by, by 2050. So, and, but there are already some projects that have already been completed in Kazakhstan. So, uh, basically, my, my data, like my, my data collection. Is, is going to be, well, um, I believe I, uh, it will involve mainly all these completed projects so far and to see the impact, the consequences already. Uh, and, and then, uh, of course, then, uh, and then, then I can uh, make some hypothesis on the, on the rest of the projects that are being built. Yeah. Okay, thank you, I see. So it's, I'm glad to know that there are uh, already finalized um, projects. Yeah, there are some, yeah. yeah. And also I wanted to add that, uh, have you um, searched other, I'm sure there are students in China or specialists who are doing the research mm -hmm. on the Belt, pro Belt project mm -hmm. from the Kazakhstan Central Asian perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be great if you uh, could quesh, uh, question I'm sure. Uh, invite uh, them as respondents. So from what I know, you'll be uh, interviewing the people in Kazakhstan, right? So what about the people in China? I'm mm -hmm. sure they will have a different perspective. Yeah, see, uh, this, uh, my methodology chapter is still under, under development. So I'm still working on it. So um, yeah, of course, thank you very much for your suggestion. Why not? Yeah, that's a good uh, idea, actually. Thank you very much. Here. Thank I you. just finished one project related to China and then Kazakhstan and some about the perceptions. Sorry, uh, so, sorry, Janan Biki, I think there is. Uh, <laughs> it's a new computer, so I don't know why it's not working. Right? It works all the time from my laptop, but yeah. So I was just saying that the, I've just finished one project related to. Do you hear me now? Yeah, 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 I do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, no. We can't hear in the, you now, Jenny Beck. Yeah, it's Before better. It was, yeah, yeah. Now we can no. hear you. Yeah, I, I was working on a project uh, also related to China, Kazakhstan, so dealing mostly about perceptions of China by those Kazakhstani students, graduates who uh, graduated from the university in China. So if you need any contacts in, in any kind of uh, help with the fieldwork, 
So, I mean, if, when you start your kind of uh, data collection process, so just let us know. Uh, and Great. we have, we know a few people here working on China related issues. So the, they may help you so, with some kind of data collection issues. Okay. Uh, again, was, from my experience, that's really helpful. It's, Thank it's, you very much for offering your help. Collect data yeah. on very politically sensitive topics. So that's why you need a lot of help from people on the ground. Yes. Sir. Great. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you, Janivik. You're kind. <laughs> okay, so I think we have uh, approached the ending time. Uh, thank you again, Bahad, for your fascinating presentation. Thank I think you. it's like a, a, such a new and a hot topic, uh, especially it's a long-term project. So you said that it will be finished in 2050. <laughs> it's like a long time ahead, like 30 years. Um, so yeah, thank you, dear participants, for your um, yeah, presence and questions. Uh, I wish you all the best, Bahat, in your future research. So, thank you very much all for your um, um, for taking your time and coming to this uh, webinar, and also for your questions and engagements. And thank you, Mother, and uh, especially for organizing all this. And uh, thank you a lot. And yes, and thank you very much for all the help offered. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, have a have a nice day all and yeah, great. Thank you. Thank See you guys. You. See you around. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>